back to another episode of The Burn, and welcome back NFL football. College football is back, and as of last night, the NFL is back with the Rams game against the Bills beginning their opportunity to defend their world championship. Now, You probably already figured out this is going to be a special episode of The Burn. Now, it isn't just going to be me. I'm just setting the table to rerun a very powerful episode with a dear friend of mine, Ted Rath. Many of you know Ted from his talk at the Mental Toughness Forum. Ted is the vice president of player performance for the Philadelphia Eagles. But when we first met and I got to understand his burn, which we're going to remind you of, because that's what we do every week. We help you find stories of athletes, entertainers, entrepreneurs, individuals performing at their highest possible level who connect to their burn, which ignites why and purpose, which causes individuals to be extremely disciplined in how they show up every day. And when I met Ted Rath, he was the head strength coach for the Los Angeles Rams. Ted and I had the opportunity to begin working while I was there in Los Angeles with him and with the team. It was incredible spending time with him, spending time with players, getting to spend time and to get to know Coach McVay. They had a special thing going. They all knew and believed that what we saw happen last year would one day happen. They went to one Super Bowl where they fell short, and last year they went all the way to the top. And what you're going to hear in this interview are things that even though Ted is now with the Philadelphia Eagles, they're foundational pieces of the mindset that was established that caused the Rams to do what they did. Now, even though Ted was with the Eagles, I know Ted's work had an extremely incredible part of the Rams winning that Super Bowl. And so we wanted to kick off this season by honoring the Rams and what they did, but also recognizing that the NFL is back. And we're going to do that here over the next month. We have an amazing episode with future Hall of Famer Andrew Whitworth, who just retired after a Hall of Fame career, a guy who was a champion at all levels of football. We're also going to have a special rerun with all of the interviews we've done with the NFL players that I work with in the league. So get your seatbelts ready for an awesome NFL season. Who's your team? Who you got taken at all this year? For me, I can't wait to watch all of the players that we are blessed to partner with attack one play at a time, 60 minutes at a time. For you, how often are you connecting to your burn? Do you just tune in to these episodes every single week? Or do you actually make this part of how you show up in life? You'll see Ted connects to his burn. It's what causes him to be more disciplined in his action. You'll hear that from Andrew Whitworth. You'll hear this from the players. you hear it from all of the individuals we bring on the burn. But make sure that you're not just listening to stories to receive motivation. Motivation is fleeting. That's why I love coaching work, because we can drive long-term growth and sustainability, and that's why we bring you the burn every single week. So let's make sure that we're not just showing up just to listen. We're identifying ways to take action. So just like the Rams, their action told the story. We don't just say we want to be great. We choose to connect to our burn. We allow it to ignite our why and our purpose, and then we take the disciplined action to go win the Super Bowl in your life, whatever that looks like. Lock in, get ready for this special episode with the former head strength coach of the Los Angeles Rams and now vice president of player performance for the Philadelphia Eagles, my dear friend, Ted Rath. Now, sometimes you got to just roll with it. And we attempted, Coach Rath and I, in order to get a film crew together. But guess what? We are doing this old school. We're doing it from the phone. But I will tell you what, the mindset of Ted Rath, which has made him the top NFL strength coach today, is what we want you guys to learn about because that's what it takes to take the burn to get to the next level. And before we talk about that, 
I want to share a couple things about Coach Rath. So for he and I, we built an unbelievable relationship. It goes back a couple of years now. And sometimes you meet people in life where it's like this instant bond. And I remember we were breaking bread here at the facility last year around the training camp period of time. And it was like, felt like we kind of known each other for a long time. No question. And it was similar mindsets, similar beliefs, similar energy. In fact, we worked out today and he absolutely killed me. For those of you that have seen our unrequired workouts, we get done with it. And he's looking at me like, is that just your stretching or is that supposed to be an actual workout? So for those of you that didn't want to try the unrequired because you think it's tough, this guy made it look easy. Unbelievable family man. So married to Robin, high school sweethearts. Literally been with his wife since she was 15, he was 17. I mean, think about this. High school sweethearts, three beautiful children here in Los Angeles has helped take the culture of the Los Angeles Rams team to the next level with Sean McVay, this entire coaching staff, and all of these players that have been committed to culture, not just winning football games. So, Ted, man, you know how much I love you. I'm appreciative of, of having you on the show with us. We've been talking about this for a while. What I'd like to do is start with that. I love it. How do you work with an individual to break through or to connect to that burn, that passion, to find out what they're really able to do? Yeah. Because when I think of what the Rams have done, the limited injuries, you've pushed people to get uncomfortable, yep. to get their bodies right. Yep. So, so tell us about that. That's a great question. First of all, I love you, brother. Appreciate this. This is awesome. Love, love these, and I'm just humbled to be a part of it. But first thing we do is try to create those relationships, because where does everything start? Trust. How do you gain trust? you got to be vulnerable. I think the first thing we try to do is create vulnerability. So when I'm dealing with a player, if I'm meeting a guy for the first time, he shouldn't trust me. I don't want him to trust me. If you trust me right off the bat, I'm going to say, don't trust people like that. Get to know him first. That can get you into trouble. So now i got to work my butt off. i got to be passionate. i got to show my energy, my enthusiasm, but most of all, my care for that individual to get them to reciprocate that. So how do I do that? i got to be vulnerable. i got to admit when I make mistakes. i got to be willing to go through the process and show them that I'm grinding on a daily basis to get better. That's my process. So now through that, I show the passion, I show the care that I have for that person. They reciprocate that along the line after we build that relationship. Mm -hmm. Then I can also get to know them through that process. As I get to know them, I get to know their purpose. I get to know their burn. What are those trigger words? What's the key thing that I need to hit when it does get uncomfortable, whether it's in the middle of a game and I can say something to them, or if it's in the middle of a workout and we're, we're killing them in the middle of the off season, and I say, hey man, What's your burn? Remember, you're doing this for your grandmother. You're doing this for your spouse, your children, whatever that goal is, your grandfather, your, your coach in high school. I get that burn, and then I can utilize that. We can harness the power of it. Like you talk about, you do such an eloquent job of it. I can't do that. But you, you describe what that burn means to us. I see it in action. So I get to see it day to day when those guys are grinding and they're working. And I can bring it back and draw upon it to harness its power because it is a powerful thing, as you know. So when we can use that power for good, I can challenge those guys to break through those uncomfortable moments physically, mentally, and take their game to the next level. So here, here's what I, so you tie that, you get somebody to that point. And we're talking about professional athletes at the highest possible level. And I know some people watching, they're, they're not a professional athlete. And sometimes they say, well, how does this apply to me? So what I would love for you to tie back to everybody listening is for that individual who is lacking the patience right now to maybe identify the process to have. And actually, let's put a twist on it. For you to get to the level that you've gotten to, that's not an overnight thing, right? Sean McVay doesn't call and say, you're going to be the head strength and conditioning coach. You don't all of a sudden have these numbers where guys aren't getting injured and people are going, what are you doing with the Rams? I mean, it's an evolution of you taking jobs that were not the long-term job for you. So for those individuals who maybe aren't where they want to be, yep. you going back to, gosh, this starting job, like looking at Robin and going, hey, babe, like, just believe me, trust me, this is yep. going to work out. What do you tell those individuals who resist? Yep. And they say, you know what, why is this taking so long? Or am I really in this space that I'm supposed to be in right yeah. now? I would challenge them first, I would say, what are you focused on? Because it sounds like me that that person would be focused on the outcome. And we always talk about this, inputs versus outputs. 
The input is the previous 15 years of my life that I spent developing my career path to what it is today, to being the director of strength and performance for the Los Angeles Rams. That didn't happen when I took my first job out of college at high school and really making no money, and then becoming a graduate assistant, getting a full-time job, leaving a full-time job to take a part-time job to get in the NFL, working for six months in the NFL without a paycheck because I maxed out my hours as a part-time employee, just volunteering, then making ends meet by starting another high school program. Those are the processes that led me to where I am. So if I was only worried that time, at that time, about I just want to be in the NFL and a head strength coach, I would have lost focus on my process. The process is what gets you to that place. So you got to shut your mind off about the outcome down the line. you got to find your burn and find your purpose, which is not long term. Your purpose isn't, well, my purpose is to be something 20 years from now. Your purpose is to be what you are today at the very best level you possibly can. And then match that and take that up another notch tomorrow. That's eventually going to lead through daily improvement and daily excellence to you being that best version of yourself 20 years from now in that role that you foresaw. You have goals, great, but you have to trust the process, and then you have to embrace the process on a daily basis. Love it. Now, one of the things, in addition to process, in addition to the burn, that I love that you and Sean have embraced is the work you guys can do off the football field. Now, I'm appreciative. I got one of these Salute to Service t-shirts. This is a badass t-shirt right here. I'm wearing it for the game tomorrow night. And this t-shirt right here makes me think of what was just released here in the last couple of weeks, which is the commitment you and Sean have made. As busy as you guys are, it's easy to say, let me just write a check yeah. and allow the check to help you understand that's important to me. Right. But you and Sean have made it an important part of this organization to say, we're going to do things that are going to give back to the military. So how important is it for you to not just say or to write a check, I'm going to give back, but to actually take action and do it? Critically important because once again, you know, the impact that you can have face to face matches no other level of money that you can lay there. You, it's above and beyond whatever you can donate financially, even if you're giving millions of dollars. We, we are fortunate because through Jake Glazer, we brought in this organization called MVP, Merging Bets with Players, and we had this workout, and it was a ball buster of a workout. We crushed these guys. These are former, these are heroes. These are military servicemen and women who served our country overseas in, in bad battles and went through some horrific things that we can't even fathom because we're over here just enjoying this beautiful country that they've worked so hard to defend. And then we have these athletes that come in, and, and at some point their, their career is going to end too. So we're trying to merge those two things. So we took them through this physically demanding workout, and we crushed everyone. At the very end, we sat down and talked. Hearing the stories of those heroes and the athletes and how their minds work and how it's all interwoven changed my perspective on everything because when you look at the impact you can have just by talking to someone and understanding their story, once again, presenting that care and that empathetic uh, mentality and trying to understand them so that you can positively impact them and other people, when I saw those interactions take place between the veterans, the players, us as a staff, it, it blew my mind because of the level of impact that we can have. I couldn't do that if I just wrote a check or if Sean just wrote a check and said, yeah, there's a worthy charity. Is that important? Absolutely. But I couldn't have that impact, and it wouldn't help me make a greater impact in the next situation that I'm in where I have an ability to talk to somebody like that. So. I love talking about intentional focus. You and I have had so many great conversations around intentional focus. So whether it's philanthropy work, whether it's locking in and accepting where you are and pushing to the next level, whether it's connecting to the burn, yep. here's one of the things people struggle with, and I'd love to finish with this question. Mm -hmm. People always struggle with, man, I wake up in the morning and I, just, I can't mentally get myself to do it again. No. Because many people don't realize high levels of success takes grit, right? Oh, yeah. My definition of grit, monotonous behavior, over and over and over again. Yeah. And for you, you have to show up with energy, enthusiasm, a great attitude, belief, and you deal with so much here. So what is it that you do, or what would you recommend? What's something that works yeah. for the morning when you wake up? Because I know you're like me, you don't wake up every morning and you want to do it, but we find ways to do it. Yeah. So how do you set yourself to attack what's in front of you every morning? I think the first and foremost thing when the alarm goes off is how fast can I shut that thing off and how fast can my feet hit the floor? 
How fast my feet hit the floor is the most important thing to me. Is how fast do I get down on my knees after that? I pray, thank God for everything that I have in my life, and I ask Him to continue to protect my family and everything else moving forward. And then it's something you've given me. It's my legacy statement. This is something that has helped me tremendously. I get my mind in the right position where I'm humble first. I start on the ground. I start on my knees and realize it's not about me. There's a bigger purpose. My family, this team, the people I get to impact, all those lifestyle things where I live through but trying to bring the best to, to everyone of myself. That legacy statement that you helped me develop, when I read that, at that point in the, in the morning, it resets my focus as to this is me. But this is where I'm going. This is how I'm going to get there starting today, starting right now at 3.30 in the morning. Now 3.31, I'm always being productive out of the next day. Now it's 3.32, let's go. How can I be even better? How can I get to that point? It's that legacy statement. It's the I am statements that really focus me and get me centered mentally. If you can't feel that energy, you can't feel that passion, you aren't breathing. So think about this. Think about the level of intentionality to focus in different areas of life. You know, I think this is a great episode heading into next year to feel the passion, to feel the energy, to feel the intentionality around how Coach Rass shows up. Think about that. How much more consistent can you be in your daily disciplines? The culture that's been developed here with the Rams, each individual stepping up and owning it. What does it look like for you if you own it, you step up and you do the work every single day and you choose to stay positive with intentional focus one day at a time? What will your 2020 look like? Ted, I'm always in your corner, brother. Thank you so much for all you do. Thank you.